Let's see if we can fix that. Harbor Freight has these twin disc horns from Pittsburgh, advertised a high and low tone at 113 and a half decibel, ultra loud, and we'll see about that. Whoa, they're a lot bigger than I thought they were gonna be. These are five inch in diameter. Looks like the actual horn part is a little bit smaller on the inside, but it gives you a good visual appeal here. This is everything in the box. Two horns relay instructions. Let's see how they want us to wire these things up. Okay, they want direct battery power to the relay to power the horns in parallel. I'll take the old horn wire and use it as the control for the relay. Yeah, shouldn't be too bad. All right, I'd like these things to be mounted pretty close to each other, but to where they're not touching. So what I'm gonna do to try to fix that is make a bracket for these two that'll go just right there. Just out of a piece of old aluminum bar stock. I think five and a half inches will do it. So I'm gonna make the first one at one, add five and a half to that, so that's six and a half. Here we go. They're not perfectly centered, but whatever, it's fine. Zip it on. There you go. Looks pretty good. Oh yeah. We're good. So I'm over at the passenger side. Opened up the wheel well a little bit and you can see the horn in there. So I'm gonna try to get that bolt off of it and get it out. I was able to fish the old wires out through the fog light hole. Wasn't enough room to bring them out this way. So I'm gonna add some extensions on there and then feed them back in through to the horn. And figure out which one of these is power. Here's the old horn. It is a two terminal style. Sometimes they're just grounded through the nut there, but I think pretty sure it's aftermarket. Anyway, we have a positive negative. So I'll just figure out which one is which. Horn switch, high tone low. Whoa. I don't think I have two horns. With that one unplugged, let me see if I can honk it. Nope, I'm pretty sure I don't. Dark green and red is powers and they're just spliced together. Dark green and red, power, power, black, black, ground. And we have black and dark green and red. So we should be good. Let me splice some wires on there. Okay, I have the new wires routed up here. I'm gonna secure them with a zip tie behind this brace so that they're not super visible. Give them enough slack to move around just a little bit. Now I'm gonna take another one, come behind this brace, secure it there. Kind of see the process I'm doing. I'm just kind of slowly working it up, routing the wires in the best location. There you go. Now it's time to split them. I'm just gonna chop one end right there, make two equal length pieces, strip them, solder them. How are we gonna weather these things is the problem. I'll show you what I do. Take a piece of electrical tape, split the branch, and wedge it down in there the best you can. Try to get it equal, and then bring them back together. And we'll give it one or two wraps with this, and we'll do it again. There you go. That's a good one. All right, same deal with this. Take a piece of tape, snap it, spread the branches apart, pull it pretty tight, put them back together. Give it one wrap or two. And then once again, because these are in front of the car in a heavy rain, water would just go right up into the wiring. So a little extra precaution here goes a long way. Since we put all that tape on there, you gotta use a pretty big piece of heat shrink. Stripping the ends off again so that I can put some spade connectors on there. Okay, got Medusa all wired up here. Now there's not really a right or wrong way to wire this up. You just want blacks and reds on there. Try to pick the same direction as far as red on the right, black on the left, that type of thing. Some zip ties. The main thing is I don't want to see the wires. All right, I said they work better if they're angled down a little bit. Let's see if they work. I'd say they work. All right, let me put the wheel wheel back on and we'll be good. Let's 
you can see them in there if you look for them, but overall, they're gonna blend in pretty well. Overall, not too bad. Not real hard to install either. And it makes your horn go from this to that. Pretty good little kit from Harbor Freight. If you wanna improve your horn loudness, this will definitely do it. Basic hand tools and I don't know about two, three hours. So I was editing the video and I wanna make sure I was clear on how I wired this up. The schematic showed a splice coming from the horn switch for the power. Then the horns here, they were basically both sharing a ground. So when you press on the horn switch on the steering wheel, it closes the contact, it branches them off and then they both have a ground. My car did not have two horns, it only had one. So what I basically did, if you wanna think about it more like that, so power flow, load, ground, power, switch. What I basically did was take the horn out of the equation. So I added some jumpers and then I did what the schematic showed. I just spliced them into my own horns, and then each one of these guys got a ground. Power switch, I used the exact same wires, I extended it, branched them so that each one would have a power source. So I used all up until the factory wiring for the horn, the plug that went right into the horn. Then I added some extensions to it and I branched them off, powers into both, and then I did the same thing with the ground. I extended it and branched them off. So there's two powers, two grounds, ultimately coming from the same factory points. The instructions wanted to utilize a relay where we had another power source then coming out and branching to each one of the horns. So when you honk the horn button on the steering wheel, it closes the contact on the relay, which energizes the coil, which closes the switch, which then feeds out power to the horns. And then you would have to find your own way back to the ground. I don't think that the relay is 100% necessary. I've had these horns hooked up on the car for a little over a month now and haven't had any issues with them. The only thing you might be concerned with is since you're adding parallel circuits into a circuit where there was only one load before, the amps are gonna increase, but I haven't seen any issues at all. Of course, I'm not honking the horn for 45 minutes at a time. I haven't run into any problems with fuses or anything like that. My neighbor was going crazy with the weed whacker. So here it is during the day. Probably not gonna be able to see much, but there they are. It's really not noticeable. It's not as big of an issue as I thought it was gonna be. You can barely tell from this angle at all that they're even in there. If you get right up on it, you can see them, but it's not that bad. Everything is held up nice. They're still really secure. Wiring's tucked away. Got the sensor put on there. No issues at all. They're not hitting the grill. Been pretty happy with them. I don't think I'm gonna paint them. I'm just gonna leave them just like they are because they're doing pretty good. And again, they're pretty loud. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments section. And as always, thanks for watching.